Don't say your name. Don't say anything until I bring your name up. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Good test. The best director I've ever worked for, probably. Not true. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. 100. Because your notes are cool. Ooh, I'm curious. Hey man, like just pronounce it better, man. <laughs> Or whatever. Do you speak English? Bobby, you yeah. know on every rip reel I do for every show, I put in your scene in the baseball stadium, and it just seals the deal. Legitimately. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? I thought the vampire dick thing was good. That was incredible, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that in, scene, you're so... You're uh, don't, so let's committed. talk about it later. Let's, let, let's start. God, it does. I, I like it that It made me idea. feel so let's much Let's start! Better. Let's start! In my mind, I'm going to Carolina. Don't you see the sunbeam? Don't you see the wind blowing in me? Side myself, going to Carolina in my mind. I love Johnny Taylor, man. He's great. Great singer. What's his name? James Taylor. James Taylor. I love that guy, man. He's, you know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of just wholesome purity. Mm. Wholesome white purity, the kind of whites that I've just always enjoyed in my lifetime. You know, the ones that, you know, I went when I graduated from high school, no one showed up except for, um, I think my dad was drunk. Oh. But um, wait, I thought, but you walked to an empty diploma, right? Cause yeah, so they didn't give me a school. diploma. They said that I could walk with them. And then, um, well, that's why. But there's a gate, there was a big fence. So, like, maybe 500 feet away when you're on the stage, there's a fence. There's stands and there's a fence. And in the fence, there was a white man. His name was Mark. And he had his hands on the chain link fence like that. And he was watching me graduate. And he had a tear running down his eye. And he was there for me. Who's Mark? Who's Mark? He's just this guy that I met in AA back in the day. Oh. I want to know drove, what. And he drove like 45 minutes just to see me graduate, and he, his hand was in the chain link fence like this. Wow. Were his legs up on the chain link too? Maybe. Like a monkey? Maybe. Yeah, I didn't see that far. But he could have been doing <laughs> that, just dangling, you know, like those barrel monkeys you see. Yeah, yeah. You know? And he was just like, in my mind, I'm going, in my mind, I'm going to Carolina. Yeah, that type of vibe. Yeah. I really love Wholesome Whites. Mm. And in this day and age, you don't see a lot, and um, mm. it really breaks my heart. Um, you know, in my journey and through life, and I've had a very exhilarating, not Lord of the Rings. Close. Not even that close. I never went to the Mines of Moria. Mm. I never did that swamp thing where the dead elves, remember that dead elves, and then and Gollum was just like, don't follow the lights, mm. right? And then, I, and then remember what Frodo did? Frodo followed the lights. And he was started sinking, right? Sinking. And then the fat fuck. Who's the fat fuck? No, it wasn't even the fat fuck. But fat fuck is Sam Wise. Sam. Right? But Gollum goes, Hey, I told you not to follow the light. Remember that scene? So I never did any of that. But, you know, I've had my own journey. And um, in, in, your, in everyone's life, in everyone's life, everyone lives their own journey. Mm. Okay? And you meet characters. And you and you experience things, right? That's what life is. Yeah. There's downs, right? Fatty, that. flatty, flatty. I wish, I wish people could have a view of what I'm seeing. What? The splatter. The I know because uh, that's why I have the wall. Yeah. The wall of uh, of protection. It's the wall that Trump wanted to build. We did, we did it here first. We did it here first. You're welcome. So, um, <laughs> and in my life, so in my life, I shut up. I love you. I love you so fucking much, Gilly. We get into a huge fight every time he uses my computer. Every single time. Oh, so he's not allowed God, to use my computer go. anymore because... I'm trying to introduce the guy, but... Uh, what sorry, happened? sorry. What what happened? Tell me, tell me. So when I get my computer back after he's had an hour session on Zoom with whoever, it there's like chunks of food all over the screen not and the keyboard. Not just random food. Blueberry protein Everything. Bar, huh? Selected. A bl blue so blueberry protein bar that we get, we're at the, we ran out by the way. You have to order more. Sun Warrior. Sun Warrior. It's just like it's a chalky, gross, 
It's not. I think it's. I, I, I know. Well, yeah, da, 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 da. It's. It's to me. Uh, I've talked about the Carnation Breakfast Bars when mm-hmm. I grew up in the mm-hmm. as a kid, right? I, I grew up with these Carnation Breakfast. They were the. They ne- they weren't good, but there's just something about it that you're just addicted to. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I'm eating that. Let, let me introduce the guy. What do you think? <laughs> so I spit. I'm I'm on Zoom. I spit it out because I have no teeth, yep. and I and, and I have little gaps in my teeth. And I, I and because I'm so powerful, I have powerful breath. Diaphragm as well. Thank you. And I was gonna say that as well. Mm-hmm. But I'm like a dragon without the breath, mm-hmm. right? You know, dragons. I don't. I've seen so a couple like, in my lifetime. So a big lizard that breathes hard. Mm-hmm. No, no, dragons, bro. Like from the medieval days, like right? Yeah. What do you like think? Skyrim shit. You know how they. Blow, remember fucking in the, uh, back to the Lord of the Rings, Thanks, yeah, good. The Hobbit, so, right? Full circle. Right? Mount Doom, smog, is smog. not the, dr- smog. smog, correct? Yeah. That right type out. of thing. Write it down, man, smog. Smog. Yeah. And you smog when he breathes, he, it's, it's a, I, I, but I breathe out, instead of fire, blueberry <laughs> protein bar, chalky shit. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying, everybody? Mm-hmm. And when you, so type, me, when you type on the keyboard, it's like Braille. Because because the blueberry all chalky stuff mounds, goes all over the screen all over and the all the keys, mounds. and so then it dries. Yeah. And then fucking complainer over here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? My own personal Karen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fighting words. You better. Oh, I can't even. No, I, I can't stand by that. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> there is no bigger Karen on this earth than you, Bobby. I, that's exactly. Oh my god! I just fucking a rage. You know what I mean? I pressed a rage button in her brain. I Paul, I was just kidding, babe. That's not a fire. Can we, we go with the voyage? Uh, I take it back. I'm the Karen in the you house. You are the Karen. I'm the Karen in the house. I take it back. I'm the Karen in the house. Okay. All right. Wow. So, the Karen off. So let's go back to the introduction, okay? Because I had a whole thing. Okay. So um. You know, many years ago, I read, I met a man by the name of Andy Santino, mm-hmm. and he doesn't like to be called Andy, but he secretly does. So people, please start calling him that. <laughs> Very <laughs> good logic. It's a logical, right? But I was playing with Andy on uh, Warzone the other day. Interesting. And I we kept going, Andy, come over here. And he stopped, and he goes, "If you call me that again, I swear to fucking." You know, I mean, he gets really angry, but he really does love it. But my point is this, okay? I get a call a couple years ago, and my agent calls me, and he goes, there's this guy named Brandy Dermer, or Brandon Dermer, and um, <laughs> there's a show, there's a show on Vice, mm. and it's called What Would Diplo Do? Mm-hmm. And what it, and I didn't know what, I had to Google Diplo, because I'm not in the fucking mm-hmm. EMD game, you know? I'm not into that. Did you say uh, EMD? Whatever, the, ga- the game, the game of EMD. fucking, dun, dun, dun. Don't, don't, don't. I don't know it. I don't know it. You know, but I love the music. When it's playing at the raves that I go to, or when I go to a discotheque. What raves do you go to? I go to the ones in Ramona Valley. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are the best ones. You have to take a map. You get out there, there's only three people there. Yeah. yeah. And it's like p- people with like green bell bottoms and they have the sticks. Dude, boom, boom, boom. And they play the diplo. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Right, right. And if diplo's there, they suck his dick. But my point is because he's so famous. So I, and I go, oh my God, this guy's a real big, credible DJ. Who else? Then they go, Vandervac, James Vandervac, right? And I go, I had to look that up, right? I look up James Vandervac. He was in a show called The Family of Five. What was it called? Dawson's Creek. Dawson's I Creek. The da- yeah, Dawson's Creek. The family of Five. Fa- <laughs> oh my God, I did like, hold on. You, you fucked me up there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that was. Um, so you're doing Seventh Heaven. No, no, no. It yeah. was the one with. Um, j- um, uh, what is it? Five in the hand. No. <laughs> makes things right. Dro- uh, Drop yeah. in the hand makes things right. <laughs> family times. Family, family. Party of five. Party of five. Party of five. Party. You son Why did you say drive? I was like, but I told you not to talk. No, I was trying to communicate. I love you, I mean. Party of five. So yeah. anyway, so then um, <laughs> then I go, and they, I go, what's the money like? And it was real low. <laughs> it was like, you know, working at like Jersey Mike's money. Okay. So I go. You know, I said to my, this is what I think that, this is verbatim what I said to my agent. Nah. Mm. Yeah. And I hung up the phone. Once they gave me the money, I go, nah. You know, and then the redheaded freak, Andy, calls me over the weekend. And Andy goes, um, hey man, um, Dermer is super talented, bro. 
I go, well, who the fuck is the, the Dermer? He's a great, he, he's from Chicago, Chicago. And he is um, super talented. You should see his real man. He's like the next thing. And he's a good friend of mine, dude. You should do the project. And I looked it up. And then next thing I know, I'm with Vander Vander. And I'm with Brandon Dermer. And we're over there on Sunset Boulevard on some sort of office building. Remember that building? And as soon as I met him, I went, yeah, that's my guy. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, folks. When you're shooting a show, right? And I've, I've, I, I've dabbled. I've never been in a lot of things. Only like 12 movies and like six network shows, whatever, you know? Just a little. I dip my feet a little. You know what I mean? For being a fat guy, gook, right? And, and when you're in those shows and you're doing things, it's like there's, there's an intimidation factor. You know, there's power plays. There's shadow play, power plays going on. Uh, directors and producers, they don't really necessarily know how to talk to the talent. You know, I get intimidated. You know, me because I'm shout, I'm very sensitive, mm. creative, multi-dimensional, but sensitive. Mm. And um, but what I love about this next guest is um, I've never seen this before, and I'll probably never see this again. Are you but okay? I had a fucking um, um, sad burp. Oh, yeah, little burp. It happens. It's been happening every episode. And a sa- little sad burp came up because I wolfed down an acai bowl. Okay. <laughs> Just now, they just, they just, I just post made it and he, I knew he was coming and I get the big one. It does, it have bloobs in it? It bloobs everything, blueberries, everything. Wow. And uh, peanut butter and I swolfed it down. But when you don't breathe and you eat, right? Sad. You try to gasp for air, but then you'll eat acai, a little air will come in and then more acai and peanut butter and blueberries mm-hmm. and bananas, right? And then the, it, traps pockets of fucking air those are the worst kind of poos to have the ones that are nuggets and then air and <laughs> well, then nuggets we gotta get to and air yeah i know we gotta get to this guy no we're fine we no no i know we have 10 minutes left the podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're good, we're good. Uh, this is my because f- every you know my thing is, is to string it along also you're on a record right now how long uh it's it's like 15 minutes yeah okay, all right all right all right <laughs> So um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just a fan, so I'm just shut the fuck up. up. What do you think of that? I'm just <laughs> taking it all. I, 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 I don't know. So anyway, what I love about um his directing style is in between breaks he plays death metal. Not not in his earphones on speakers. Say <laughs> You know stuff like that, right? Sounds like corn. It's like corn, yeah. right? And then he'll go action, and then music, <laughs> and then the music will stop. And then you're just kind of trying to do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, he also gives great notes, like faster, you know what I mean? Or I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> just pronounce it. I don't know what you're saying at all. Just do it better. Pronounce it. You know, just general. Meisner you know, stuff, yeah. But he's really just, um, he, uh, there was a time where, you know, at the baseball scene, was it the baseball? You, you know, where I had to do this, like, emotion, you know, I'm, you know. Very emotional. Un- not emotional, but I had to be, like, stern. Mm-hmm. And do this, say this thing. I was really nervous, but he's able to make me feel more comfortable. Anyway, he's a great director. He works. He does all of Diplo's music videos. He works with um, Michael Francis. What's his name? Dylan Francis. <laughs> Michael. Yeah, yeah. Francis. Dylan, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dylan Francis, another DJ. Boom, 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 boom. Or the rate, you know what I mean? In Ramona Valley. Yeah. Um, I only know three. I know Dip. I don't know Diplo, but I know of him. Um, I know Michael Francis and I know um, Stevie Yecki. Stevie Yecki. But anyway, um, Brandon Dermer, give him a round of applause, guys. Yeah, He's a director, wow, writer, you. you know what I mean? Thinker. thinker. Thanks, guys. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. How you, how you doing the, during the pandemic? It's fine. That was, a, that was a lovely intro. <laughs> <laughs> Did it annoy you at all? No, I, I, as a fan, I, I, like I said, I'm just watching how the sausage gets made. Mm-hmm. I can just well, sit here and just watch. Oh. I don't have to talk. You guys keep going. Wow. I think uh, about 50 episodes ago, you talked about Dermer and you said you likened him to uh, uh, a guy, a wholesome um, gas attendant from Cir- from Circle K. Mm-hmm. Yep. You remember that, Dermer? Oh, yeah. Yep. I still have people DM me that all the time. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. But that I, I want to even say something even further. Um, you literally do have a 1940s like um, valet. <laughs> oh, wow. You know what I mean? Or, yeah, yeah. or via, or you know, the... 
when you go to a hotel mm -hmm. and it's the guy, kid in the elevator. The bellboy? The, he's not even a bellboy. He just <laughs> he's not switches even it on. Yeah. Right. And it goes up. You just have this kind of like, you know, um, very nostalgic, old timey, oh. you know what I mean? But also not like you wouldn't be a soldier in the 1940s or 50s. No. You're more of like, um, you know, the baker son. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I worked in hospitality for many years. Mm. Did you really? Yeah. In Chicago? Yeah. Well, I, is restaurants hospitality? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, what, res what restaurant? I worked at the Weber Grill. What, oh, what's that? Uh, the Weber Grill restaurant. Well, yeah, what the fuck is it? Like they make Weber, they make food on Weber Grills, like steaks and yeah. Oh, what's a Web Weber Grill? You know what a Weber Grill is? It's like you know, the most oh, wait, wait, wait. grill in let's, the world. Let's do it. Let's do it. Vote in the in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know what a Weber? I also know what the restaurant because I'm from Chicago. So oh, really? I know what he's talking about. Oh, so you know what the Weber Grill is? Yeah. Okay. What is it? It's like actual. It's a grill. It's a grill brand. Weber Grill. Oh wow! How about you, babe? Have you heard of it? Yeah, I have heard of it. Oh fuck, man! Yes. I worked. At, <laughs> I worked at Potbelly. I was a sandwich artist for many years. You Bro. a sandwich That's artist? Right. That's yep. exactly the vibe I think, Bobby. You were going for. But not only that, Potbelly. We don't have them here. I know. Delicious. Right? What is? I, I'll tell you what I like. What do you like in that Potbelly? I get the Italian. I add mushrooms mm -hmm. and oh. extra meat. Extra meat. You know what I do, Papa? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what I do, Papa. Mm -hmm. I love their meatball sandwiches. Oh, yeah. With the pepper thing. Mm -hmm. The jardinier. Fuck, what, yeah. how do you say it? The jardinier. The jardinier. That's, that's that's in my lifeblood. That's, that's the best stuff ever. That's what you we ordered. Mm -hmm. You ordered a couple jars. Remember? You can order Potbelly jardinier. Oh. Mm -hmm. There you go. Man. Also, Domingo's in Encino. They Domingo's? Sell, they sell great jardinier. Fucking th write that down, Domingos, man. You know, you guys should get sandwiches there. Get some. Holy fuck, I'm learning new things. By the way, I fully support your uh, when you suggested the the crust list from Luminati. Thank you. And Bobby threw a hissy fit because uh, there was no crust. Bro, let me say something. It was the best. I th I still think it's the best. Uh, it's really special. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's the deal. Okay. Let's get let's get into it if you want to. Mm -hmm. But um, one time, Carlos Mencia mm -hmm. goes, hey, bro. He goes, hey, bro, I'm going to lose weight, bro. I go, what is it? Let's go to In-N-Out. I'm like thinking, In-N-Out? What the fuck? We go to In-N-Out. He gets a hamburger, right? No bun. Animal style? Just, you, what, you know what replaces the bun? Lettuce. Fuck you. Your lettuce. <laughs> You're right. It, yeah. But fuck you. But, but he was doing the Atkins diet then back in the day. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So he was, hey, bro, I'm eating fucking a hamburger, but not getting fat, bro. Right. And, and I'm, I know people are going, wow, in this day and age, how come Bobby's doing an Hispanic accent that way? It's not an accent. It's an impression. Mm -hmm. By the by. Okay? By the by. So when I ordered the fucking stupid pizza that you suggested, <laughs> right, and everyone at home listening, you're in a car drive, or you, you know, I, I read a couple of um, tweets the people will like close their eyes and sleep with me. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Is that your only fans? No, 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 not sleep with me, but they'll sleep, sleep to listening to Tiger Belly. You. Okay, that oh. makes more sense. Yeah, I like saying sleep with me. Mm. Yeah, but they'll lay in bed and they'll listen. So if you're listening now, okay, this is what, so what was it, crustless? Crustless. So imagine it's a pizza. It's their keto option. There you go. Okay, so a pizza, I'll just give you a, I, I'm sure everyone's eaten one, right? And so there's three elements to a pizza that makes it a pizza, right? That's a good argument. I've heard yeah, this. Oh, you've heard this argument? Yeah. May, may, may I say my argu argument? It's the same. May I say my argument? Yeah. Please do. Okay, thank you. I have another argument to, to your argument. Okay, let so. me say my argument okay, first go. then, okay? <laughs> we'll get to his argument. And then we'll get to your argument. Well. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm stewing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you getting angry? Uh, no, I'm just ready. Okay, so... You know, a pizza has the crust part, mm -hmm. the breading, yeah, mm -hmm. the foundation, mm -hmm. a la the foundation. It also has some sort of sauce, whether it be pesto. Generally, it's red tomato sauce, a pizza sauce, okay? And cheese. You can put whatever you want on top as well. These funky, these funky fucking, you know what I mean? Island Asians, right? They like to put shit like boar meat and pineapple, right? And but that's you know, that it's America, man, right? But whatever your thing is, sometimes I like to put 
you know, extra diff like Parmesan, red peppers, whatever it might be, okay? But those are the three things, right? If you take one of those out, right, then it becomes cheese red sauce. Pasta topping. If you take the cheese off, right, it just becomes tomato on bread. Yeah. Right? It's not a pizza. Yeah. Okay? So this fucker, right, suggests <laughs> suggests me a crustless. So I go, crustless, I don't I want I because I, also in my mind I'm like, it's just not gonna have a crust. Yeah. Right? Oh, I see what you're saying. Exactly. Bingo. Still a bottom, just no. There's crust. gonna be a bottom. There's gotta be a bottom. But no, okay, got it. Right, I'm sorry. Am I, I being, feel. Am I being too aggro? No, no, no. But I, I, I think I feel like I'm being too. Let me, so, but it's not that. What the is crust it? is not a requirement. Then you're saying the backing. It just needs a foundation. I, I think I'm being too aggro about it, but and I'm, I'm trying to check myself. But what he, what I got in the mail, was um, you know the sausage, you know how there's some sort of sausage in the pizza. Yeah. That's. The fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the the sausage is shaped like a fucking disc, mm -hmm. disc, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And very the tightly cheese, woven together. And the cheese, good foundation, and the, and the, innovative, and, and the innovative. red is in there. So then I'm like, you know, er, you know, you get minerals, vitamins, B plex, mm -hmm. carbohydrates, B plex, B plex carbohydrates, love B -plex. yeah, love B -plex. amino acids, <laughs> amino acids, and you know, <laughs> things to from bread. Mm -hmm. FYI, you know. This whole no carb thing, mm. it's a fucking hoax, folks. Mm. Wow. Right? It's Write that down. The bread Plus has folks. B plex <laughs> vitamins, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It has amino acid. It's well, got it's I got dynamic. It's got dynamic, you know what I mean? Carbs. Dynamic is very important. It's, thank you. Dynamic, yeah. Carbs to insulate the body. Yep. Yeah. And it keeps the engine running. Yeah. And without the breading, right? You're not really getting the nutrients that you deserve. The body needs. Yeah. Right. Okay. So here I get a sausage bowl, you know, filled with cheese, <laughs> che cheese and, and red sauce. Okay. And so go ahead, your jargon. No, I'll pass it off. Go so, ahead, Brett. So, Bob, the reason I suggested the, the sausage crust, right, is because <laughs> I heard you on the podcast talk about how you were eating like six a week. Ah. Mm -hmm. And I was just so inspired by your commitment to Lou Malnati's. It's my favorite place in the entire world. And most people don't know about the crustless pizza. Mm -hmm. It's it's not secret menu like in and out stuff, but a lot of people don't order it. I didn't learn about it until a year ago. Mm. And I just get excited to share this secret opportunity mm. and item with you. It doesn't replace the pizza, but it's it's an experience. Mm. Mm. And it still sits with you and you guys can talk about it and deliberate. <laughs> and I just wanted to share the experience because I'm I'm inspired by your commitment to Lou Malnati's. Wow. It's rare I meet people from uh, outside of Chicago who are as committed as you are. Truly. In, in fact, he has only ordered food strictly from Chicago, no other state. Oh, no, that's not true. You got the Detroit pizza, and then that's it. Everything else has been from Chicago, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. And that just warms my heart. Mm -hmm. The Vienna beef, everything. Oh, you get that too? Every Everything from Chicago. Well, you know, I have to say something about Chicago. Is that when I'm at the airport, first of all, what do you call that airport? O'Hare or Midway? I've heard of it. Okay. Or Midway. Midway. <laughs> yeah, it's O'Hare. I go to Chicago O'Hare. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've been there, but there's terminals, correct? Mm -hmm. if something happens at O'Hare that I've never experienced anywhere else. Is There's an underground tunnel connecting the two terminals. What the fuck is on the ceiling? The lighting? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. You, it's not. I want to. I, my dream is to shoot a music video in that Ooh. underground little. But area. you, you know, you know what I'm saying. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, the I, neon, like. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy looking. It's beautiful. I, I guess, you know, if you're like, you know, it looks like if Liberace exploded. Yeah. <laughs> is it overwhelming? Is it too much? It just. It's very 80s looking. Yeah. It's very 80, like you know, late 70s, or 80s vibe, and it just feels like you know. It's a little too, ah, I'm about to say something that I don't want Chicagoans, you know, shy time, shy, shy time people. Say it. <laughs> Just say it. Just say it. Yeah. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break to share one of our favorite sponsors with you. Forhims.com. It's all about men's wellness, guys. Need help with your hair loss, ED, or have a cold? Interested in a mental health or COVID-19 home test? Hims is here for you. You guys, if without 
I, I wish I had hands growing up, man, because I had hair loss going up the yang yang, dude. Oh man, I need a professional advice. This is um one of the best services that we can promote. Um, sixty six percent of men start to lose their hair by the age of thirty five. Did you know that? Does it seem like you're moving ahead in life, but your hairline is moving backward? Oh. Maybe. So sad. Huh? Oh man. Huh, Ron Howard? Maybe your dad had to settle for hair loss, but thanks to him, you don't have to. It's time to prevent more hair loss and no better time while you have you have some time. Tell them more. Thanks to science, hair loss can be optional. Hims connects you to FDA-approved products to treat hair loss, and they have thousands of happy customers loving their results. Tell us more about it, Gil. Today, Hims is giving their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. And right now, our listeners can get their first visit absolutely free. Go to 4 slash belly. That's 4 slash belly. Full refund of price paid available for the first 90 days supply. Refund requests must be made between 90 and 180 days after product shipment delivered. Prescription products require an online consultation with a medical professional who will determine if, pres- if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Better help. You guys, better help is oh my god, it saved my life. Mm. It, this is um online counseling, but it's more than that, guys. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Better help will assess your assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, guys. It's not self-help. It's professional mm-hmm. counseling done securely online. Kalila and I have both uses we both use this service. It's so helpful to us. The service is available for clients worldwide. Tell them more, Kalila. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. They also have a feature where you can, um, it's, it's where you can journal and your counselor can have access to it. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. Go, Gilbert. Visit close their, it out. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit BetterHelp.com slash belly. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, and join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Special offer for Tiger Belly listeners. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp dot com slash belly enjoy the rest of the show when i go to chicago air hair and i'm in the morning i go to this uh hot dog place that's in the right and they have breakfast stuff but they always say we can make you also a chicago dog Mm. there's nothing better than deep dish chicago pizza Mm -hmm. there's nothing better than fucking you know the chicago dog Mm -hmm. have you ever been to gibson's absolutely Best steakhouse on planet Earth. It's really good. Right? Mm-hmm. He's not saying it's the best. He's saying it's really good. <laughs> that was his way of saying, okay, I'll let you have your opinion, but that's not mine. I like Gibson's a lot. I don't know <laughs> if it's the best it steak is. in the world. I really like it, though. Kalila, catch that. And remember in the league, they shot, they made that. Did you ever watch the league, that show with all the, the folks in it? They shot. Who's in it? The folks in it. Nick, me- like John Lejoie uh-huh. and Nick Kroll and. Yeah. Paul Shear and all them. Who else? Mark Duplass, <laughs> Steve Renazizi. Steve oh. Renazizi. Oh. Ah, yeah. Steve Renazizi. They pretend that the, the bar, their neighborhood bar, it's Gibson's. Like the exterior shot they got is Gibson's. Yeah. I, you we, know, I've been on the show. I know you have. Yeah, yeah. Then why'd you ask me? Because I, I just wanted to see your reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Renazizi. Okay. I know it's not the best fucking steakhouse in the world, right? But you really like it. No, it's not just that I like that. It's, it's I like things that have been somewhere for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like, y- y- do you love the comedy store? Yes. Why? Because it's been there a long time. There's history around it. I get it. Yeah. Yes. Nostalgia. I'm yeah, nostalgia. but there's also, you know, the walls mm. speak stories. Not just, you know, things that happen there, but I think I think buildings absorb energy, right? And there are, like, just in terms of comedy, cultural things, events that have happened in that building and only in that building. And also, I believe it's haunted. And also, they have not changed really much about the club. It's always looked the same exact way. So it's almost like you're going to into a time capsule, right? Th- that's how I feel about Gibson's. I waited tables at a restaurant up the street from Gibson's called Jake Melnick's. And w- all through film school. 
and then we would tell I me. I imagine about- you to be the best table waiter. Mm, I was horrible. I was enthusiastic, but I would fuck up a lot and forget a lot of things. One time, one time, a, a couple was very rude to me, and my manager deactivated their credit card. They were just like grinding me. They're really mean, really oh, wow. aggressive. I used to purposely stick my finger in the dishes while I'm carrying it. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's on purpose. Mm. Like if there was a salmon, I would just stick my thumb in, <laughs> and just you know. What restaurant? I can't say I can't it because say. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. Did you get in trouble? I think so. Yeah, because I because the I I have I still have a relationship with them. Oh, okay. so I don't want to. Yeah, it's so fucking funny to me. I just imagine like your whole thumb just in someone's meat. Yeah, yeah. Just holding it like this. that. Little extra sodium for. Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, more than just more yeah. than just sodium. Yeah, 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 yeah. Other things, but um, I could also imagine like, huh, is that where the bone was, or you know, I mean the steak? You know? Did you ever get caught or no? No, 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 I wasn't a good waiter though. I, um, you know, I, um, I just, there's, I'm like my bro, my brother's worse, but there's a point where I just kind of, my, I can't shift. I can't pretend. There's a lot of acting, right? Mm-hmm. You can't go, Hey, sir. Like they go, Hey buddy. Um, where's the ketchup? Right. There just gets to a point where you go, Hey buddy. Um, I'm fucking busy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I forgot. Mm-hmm. Watch your tone. You know, that comes out. Yeah. So then that reflects on the tip. Absolutely. <laughs> that always reflects on the tip, you know. So um, let's get to, into how you started directing. Go ahead. Let's get into I'm it. Asking, oh, the whole thing? Just like. Well, I mean, did you go to film school? I did. Where? Chicago. Columbia and Chicago. Colum- not, not like uh, Columbia. Columbia and Chicago. George hates when people say Columbia because he went to Columbia. I know you have to say Columbia of Chicago because the re- the smart people get very offended. <laughs> to me, I- I've said- always heard that Chicago Columbia was better than the other Columbia. <laughs> you heard it here first, Bobby Lee on Tiger. No, they're Bowie. just more. Um, you just absorb more information there, and only greater people come out of them. That's true. absolutely. Yeah, That's yeah. true. George just said he paid more money for less success because he went to the Columbia Columbia. The Ivy League. Is there a Columbia College in Columbia? I think there's a Columbia College in Hollywood, too. I think oh, I've seen that off the 405. There's four. Yeah. yeah, there's a few. So you went to film school in the, the, the good Columbia. Good Columbia. <laughs> it, only- it, it started, I played in shitty bands all through high school. <coughs> Let me guess what kind of music. Like screamo, post-hardcore bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Why the, do you like that? I don't know. Yeah, you do. I'm a little angry sometimes. And it's just good. It's good, it's good musicianship. It's fun. It's yeah, energetic. but you told me once... That you sleep to it. It does calm me. I do find that it either really invigorates me or really is soothing. Maybe because it's so chaotic and it takes away from the chaos of life. Mm. I can see that. Or of set too. It's so chaotic. You can put on this metal that's far more filled with madness. See that band above you? It says Drive Like Jehu. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like a punk math rock band. Pretty loud. You're pretty like screechy. Love and you're rock. right. I do listen to that when I go to sleep. Mm-hmm. I think because my mind, I, I'm so crazy in my mind. I have so many thoughts. And I, it, it, for some reason, even with the feedback and, and, the, and in math rock, it's repetitious, right? I like counting the repetition of it, right? And it's somehow I can get in sync with it. So I, I get what you're saying. It's like a meditative mantra, like you're following it constantly. Bro, we've never been on the same page until now, my friend. Right now? T- even during the show, you weren't on the same page? We were. That's actually here. Have you ever heard of Vaporwave? <laughs> Mm-mm. Bobby is lately into this thing called, well, a couple waves. One is Vaporwave. One is the other one. What's the one that sounds like the Weather Channel, but with music? Vaporwave. That is Vaporwave, yeah. right? I like cold wave music. What's Cold Wave again? Cold Wave is sort of like... Um, Joy Division? Think of Joy Division, but like even less produced. Mm. More, like more uh, synthetic and lo-fi. Yeah. I'm intrigued. It's very cold. Like cold, They call it cold because it's just distant and um, very kind of not metallic, but just um, lo-fi. You know, you'll like it. You'll get what I'm saying if I played you some music. Ethereal. It's just it's, like... Yeah. No, it's just... You know, it, it, there's a tempo. To, dun, mm. dun, 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 you know, dun, 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 dun. I, I love when you do different genres of music. <laughs> that sounds like Ian Curtis, babe. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff, right? But Vaporwave is more... Um, you ever see in in the um, 
80s or 90s, the Weather Channel. Mm-hmm. And at nights, uh, you know how sometimes back in the day, you millennials won't even know. Or, or give us a chance. I'll give you. I'll give you a chance. Um, back in the day when we were in, I was in high school. Um, you would turn on to TV at eleven thirty, and it would just turn off. <laughs> it would just go, boo, and there would just With be like the rainbow lines, like rainbow right? lines, yeah. right? Or some channels would have, you know, the statue of you know, but, but you know, in Vietnam when they were holding the flag in place. I don't know why it took fifteen dudes to do that. Why did it take 15 dudes to know. do that? But you know how they're holding the flag in place? Yeah. They go, yeah, America, man, look at my fucking flag. Uh-huh. You know how they do that? Right? And they would be like an Ameri- God bless America, mm-hmm. and they would just have that photo and play some sort of like. But the Weather Channel used to have, it'll just say Weather, Weather Channel and the logo, and this weird sort of music. Music. <laughs> Like elevator music, kind of. Oh, okay. That's, but Vaporwave, imagine that with a little bit more of a beat. That's mm-hmm. Vaporwave. In fact, the Vaporwave I listen to have like, you know, the forecast tomorrow, well, they'll, you literally, literally hear it. Them say, the forecast tomorrow is 90 degrees over Fahrenheit, this and that. I mean, the traffic is really bad. And they'll have that in it. In it. But I really like it. Do you remember the songs that you had on your MySpace page? Yeah, the same songs I listen to now. What I mean, there had to have been like at least a rotation. Yeah, the Pixies. I would. I have always liked the same things, the Pixies, Sonic Youth. I used to like the Velvet Underground, Roxy Music. I liked Television. I liked. Uh, you like Television from CBGB back that back then. Love the Talking Heads. What did you have on your MySpace page? I was too focused on managing my band's MySpace page. And so just, you, you never had a song on your personal. <laughs> I don't. I honestly don't remember what it was because I was so hyper focused on. My shitty band's MySpace page. What was the band called? Cellar Door. Because <laughs> this is painful. Be- Dark. Because Donnie Darko was like stoned in high school. And like, whoa, do you remember that scene where the teacher's like the most beautiful two words in the English language together are Cellar Door? Oh, wow. So it was called Cellar Door? Yeah, so lame. No, I like it. It's cool. Because nothing that ever think good happens in a cellar. Yeah, it's That's not- true. So the door, you know. Yeah. Well, no, there's wine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's wine, mm-hmm. but um. So there's called, a kimchi cellar. There's a kimchi True. cellar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was called Cellar Door. How many yeah. g- gigs do you guys do? We played like three every weekend, all over uh, in the Midwest. Like wow, basements wow. in Chicago. VF lots of VFW halls. We play in Wisconsin as well, Indiana. Do, do you get any goth pussy after the shows? Not really. <laughs> We weren't we weren't that heavy. We would play. We were playing with like hardcore bands and then pop punk bands. Oh, and we wow. were somewhere try in the middle, blending those two. Yeah, I was wondering because I was in a band as well. I was wondering what, what's the end goal? Did you have dreams of being a rock star? Oh yeah, I wanted. So in high school, I played in a band. We made music videos for the band. I want to see those. Do there, you still have them? I do. I made a lot in high school. I was like, I did that, and then me and my friends made sketch comedy for clubs at our school, and we were trying to be like the funny alt comedy. So we would basically take. UCB sketches from Comedy Central and repurpose them to be about like Xbox Club, the clubs that would allow us to make videos oh. to promote their club. So you were kind of like Rushmore, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All these weird but clubs. Way less stuff. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you you went to Columbia, the only one in my book. Thank you. Chicago yeah. Columbia. And um, I better get kickback from them. You will. It's a huge endorsement. You will. And you started, st- you started um, film school there. Yep. And what was your ultimate goal to do movies or I didn't really know. I played in another band after Cellar Door. <laughs> um, we got a cease and assist from a band in L.A. that we had to change our name. Even we had like <laughs> 400 fans. So we changed our name to Morning Scene. That band broke up. But the I love band, that fucking name. Morning. Thank you. Morning Scene is thank cool. You. Yeah. And yeah. then after that band broke up in film school, uh, the bass player and I, who's the production designer on What Would Diplo Do? We started a band called Football Weather. So I played in that band. Great fucking name. Thank you. I love that band. Um, football weather is a great. There's you. a band called Football. Oh. Or American Football is not. Uh, is that American Football? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that band. Yeah. American Football. They great put like name. one album. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're good. So I played. So and then I, I, I just wanted to to study everything. So my friends and I saved up five of us. We bought a Panasonic DVX 100A, and we would just make a short every month because we were only required through school to make three. Mm. Do you do one every month? Yep. And, and we would write, star, direct everything and just, wow. yeah. 
So then I just because I don't get I know how comedy works. I just don't know how your world works. So you graduate from Colombo mm-hmm. and Columbia, mm-hmm. and you um do you just move straight to LA? I my last semester was in LA. I got in this like honors program at the CBS Radford lot, which basically every day two people from the industry, from like a big agent to an assistant or a big writer to an aspiring writer, would come in and sort of just tell their story. And it was very informative that there's like no right way to do anything in this business. Ah, mm-hmm. right. uh, because like film school, they're like, get your meeting 15 minutes early, have your business card and like all that stuff mm-hmm. um, yeah. at Colombo. But then in this class, you really heard these like real world crazy stories. You know what I do? You know what I do? <laughs> it just reminds me. Mm-hmm. You're going to hate the story, but <laughs> you're going to hate it. You're gonna, give, me, you're gonna, you're give me a chance. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll, give, I'll give you a chance. So when I was on Splitting Up Together, we had some an intern that like won some sort of thing or it's through a college or something. But you could, she's just bright eyed and bushy tailed, right? Because she can't believe she's on a TV set. Mm-hmm. But then whenever I run into people like that, I act extra affected. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I weird. hate this story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they'll be like, oh, it's just so good to, like, I, I can't believe this is. And I'll be I, I, like, I'll talk as if, you know, you don't even understand what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, you know, it's actually, you know it's, but you know, the, the rehearsal, you were there. Oh God, I hate this story so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're like, "What?" And like, I want them to think that like it's so beyond, mm-hmm. right? For me, and like, see, I, she's gonna go home and be like, "Oh my God!" Like he was so eccentric. Yeah, and he, like, he wore one sock. Yeah, yeah. and he just yeah. Uh, I, and he I was just know you so, so well. And, uh, you know, I want to fucking. And that, she's told that story, and someone's told that story. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, story yeah. is traveled. Or like, if she's sitting, like this person's sitting around, I'll just sit weird, mm-hmm. like this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll sit like this. And just go and just go, just just nonsense. Ah, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Do you see that? Oh man, the sun. Fuck, it's so bright today. And just act, just act weird and aloof. And she's just all bushy tailed and excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, but I purposely do it just to throw out, you know, me that image. Yeah. yeah. You like it? Oh God. So I anyway, dead like you so bad. <laughs> So do you go to uh, so you did the Radford thing and then um, and then I got internships. I had like five internships and I was hosting at restaurants. I couldn't get a job waiting tables here. I walked up and down Ventura. I walked from Vineland and Ventura all the way to Sepulveda dropping. I had a kick ass resume. Ooh. Weber Grill, Jake Melnick's Blockbuster. <laughs> I, I, had like a, yeah. I was real. Yeah, I could yeah. not get a job. Why um, do you think? I, I think because to get a job as a waiter out here is like a hot commodity and I didn't have a headshot and I was a. Yeah, that's exactly uh, it. You didn't have a headshot. You didn't a have a headshot. Dorky yeah. dude, and but yeah. I got a job um, as a host at a restaurant, so I did that for a little bit, and then one of my internships turned into a full time job as an assistant. So I was an assistant to a producer and a manager for four and a half years. Oh wow! What you can't m- mention? I can't. Yeah, uh, it was called Underground Films. Oh. I was two. I was for this guy Nick Osborne, Trevor Angelson, and Ali Opst all at the same time. Well, you must have learned a lot there. I did yeah. everything because, like you know, in film school. I was perfecting the art and my friends filming our dick joke videos really like honing that in but there I learned you know from just being on the desk and listening to those calls with them and agents them and producers them and networks I learned you know everything yeah that's cool that you say that because you know even when I see if you go to any agency for instance and you see the mailroom department you know all those kids are the future of the industry right mm-hmm. they, they but they're you know it's a grueling job mm-hmm you know, um, when Andy Farag was an assistant to one of the agents at at CAA, he had, you know, most assistants have their own, like, cubicle outside the office. This agent wanted Andy in his office. So his uh, Andy Farag's office was just in this guy's room. So he would just get yelled at. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? All day. But, you know, there was always a smirk mm-hmm. with the agent, you know what I mean? Just putting this kid through the ringer. Oh, yeah. But Andy was so fucking just gung ho about it because he knew it was all in jest mm-hmm. and that he's just learning everything you need to know. I think that's a very cool thing that you did that. I learned so much from that job. Like, I had to read, like, you know, 15 to 20 scripts a week. I'd sit in on notes calls. And then I met, that's how I met Andrew. And that's also how I met John Lajoie. Like, so much of my career started from... Wait, wait, wait. So I want to know that meeting. I, Andrew was a client there. And I was the assistant. Be like, hi, Andrew, are you coming in tomorrow at, you know, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) And then, and and, and then did you guys, okay, so did you guys hit it off? Yeah, we hit it off on the Chicago thing. And yeah, yeah. Andrew's such a nice guy. And then I started doing videos with John Lejoie, who was on the league. He's great. He's great. And, and he and I hit it off as well. So 
um, you know, he just moved from Canada. I'm just moved from Chicago. We're both like the Midwest. Nice. Hi, sorry, everything. And we went to shows to UCB together and I was like, I'd love to help with your comedy videos on like nights and weekends when I'm not here. So I started shooting his YouTube stuff. Wow. And then John was like, we should get some of the underground clients or like anyone, you know, funny in this. And we put Andrew in one. And that was the first time we like really worked together. But that was John and I and a handheld camera. How long ago? 2000 and probably 10 or 11. Wow. Mm -hmm. So then you go from there to um, how do you meet? I got like, like, okay, so there's a couple of things that you do, mm -hmm. right? You you obviously, you know, you know, did the show, what would do, which is a regular TV show mm -hmm. that's scripted and whatnot, mm -hmm. right? But um, you're also known for doing music videos, correct? Mm -hmm. And so how do you hook up with a guy like Diplo? So the the quick version is I had to get off that. No, no quick. This the, is your episode. Oh, wow. No quick. This yeah. is your episode. Thank you, Bobby. Um, I had to get off that desk as an assistant. And I had to, and I watched, you know, how people were getting signed in Hollywood with music videos or viral videos or a script. I wrote a bunch of scripts. I couldn't get anyone to read them. So I made a fake trailer for a fake movie that I knew would never get made called Flesh Lightning. Um, <laughs> about, about a kid who stumbles upon, he buys it from James Hong. And he buys a fleshlight, a magical fleshlight, and he's banging it and gets struck by lightning and it impregnates the porn star who was molded after Jenna Hayes. Yeah, genius. Wow. And I somehow convinced Fleshlight, I just cold called them. I found their number online. I was like, hi, I'd like to talk to someone in your PR department. I was like, hey, I have this viral video I want to try to make and I need a little bit of money. And they're like, cool, yeah, let's do it. And they put up the money. I made this thing. Wow. Yeah. And I pulled every favor. While I was on the desk, a lot of my friends from film school were like assisting on set in the camera department and this, that, and the other. Also from my time, like I, got, I had an amazing production designer who worked on big movies that my bosses made. Um, and they also helped me cast it. But that was the first thing to like get me an agent and a lawyer and help me sell my first script. Wow. So you do the Fleshlight short, mm -hmm. Flesh right? Lightning. Light, yeah. Lightning short, mm -hmm. right? It does. It's it's good, mm -hmm. right? Because I had, I had heard of it, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you got an agent from that, mm -hmm. right? And then you were able to go into real rooms and pitch your shit. Yeah, that was like got me the first like I did generals everywhere from that short, and while still an assistant, which was intense. So I had to schedule the meetings like perfectly so an intern could cover the phones while I like went and. Amazing, dude. Mm -hmm. Amazing. But then how did Dip Dip do? So Dip Dip came from. Uh, you know, from 2011 to like 2012, I'm just reaching out to bands and making music videos for them, like finding their Instagram or their manager's Instagram and like bombarding them. And then um, I stumbled into a bar and saw this band Necrogoblicon play. My neighbor and my good friend Randy was like, you want to come see this band Necrogoblicon? I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah. I love everything. And um, we're listening to the album on the way there. And I was like, man, this is so technical and masterfully written. This is either going to be like one guy in his computer or like 12 behemoth assholes just like. <laughs> and we walk in there and it's just seven dudes masterfully playing this music. But they just look like dudes. And I thought it was so funny, their commitment to writing these intense songs about goblins. Like, I want to make a music video for you. And they're like, yeah, mm -hmm. we've heard that all before. Like, we're, we don't want to dress up. We're not gore. And I took a trip to Chicago. And I, I visited my mom in Wisconsin on the drive back and I sat at Pippin's bar and I just like it, this, mm -hmm. this character like spewed out of me and I wrote it. I pitched to the band. They're like, yeah, let's do it. We have no money. So I reached out to like 80 brands relentlessly. Like, here's who I am. Here's my previous videos. Blah. And I got three to pay for it. And we put it out. I didn't <sighs> I didn't think anything was going to come from it. But on like the third or fourth day, it was on the front page of Reddit. And then the day after that, Diplo just tweeted the word Necrogoblicon. Uh -huh. And then I got in touch with his manager. And yeah, bro. That's a great bro. Point. You bro, hustle, yeah. bro, yeah. bro. I got the chill bumps on my fucking skin right no. now. Yeah, I'm getting teary eyed mm -hmm. because I'm gonna say something to you. All right, this isn't a dude, right? That that sits idle. That's nepotism. This isn't a dude that comes from Hollywood royalty, right? Mm -hmm. This is a dude that went to Columbo Columbia University, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Came out here, waited. T I mean, oh. what? Couldn't wait tables, hosted. Couldn't wait, hosted at places, <laughs> right? And But what I love about it is is that it's a guy that everything that you have, right, wasn't handed to you. You are the one. Because imagine making phone calls to fucking, you know, companies. Going, hey, can I, I don't even know who to call PR, PR department. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Hi, you know. Imagine doing all the footwork 
that you need to do. And, he, and it's so funny about him because if you look back mm-hmm. at Diplo, when I told my agent no, right, that wasn't enough for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He went to Andy, Andrew Santino, mm-hmm. and go, dude, you got to make the call, convince mm-hmm. him, right? Most people are like, oh, we'll have to find somebody else. Not this guy. He knew who, what he wanted, right? So he made the effort. And I'm sure that even if the Andrew Santino didn't work out, he would find another a, another mm-hmm. angle. My point is, is that, you know, that's just who he is. I know what other angle he would have taken after what, Andrew. What, what? He would have used the Mad TV connection what Mad to TV? the character that you played. What? Right? No. Who, who did you play? Who did I play where? Just go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go, no, go ahead. What do you mean? The man, you played a manager, right? I played a man. Oh, okay, that's right. There, you're right. Yeah. Oh God. Wait, what? No, no, this is it. This is it. So, you you mean through Clyde? Yes. So, in Diplo Show, I play a manager mm-hmm. who is based on a real guy, mm-hmm. and his name is Kevin. Kevin, I love Kevin. So Kevin, the guy that I played on your show. You're right now. Okay. Okay, so there it mm-hmm. is, right? So, but. <laughs> I'm a hustler too. <laughs> yes, I you are a hustler that. too. So I was the real But dude. when I was on Matt TV, Kevin's dad frequently did Matt TV because I always requested him. Because if you ever see Star Trek or Godzilla or any of these movies, there's always a Japanese man the, in the same guy that I, I always, you know, I, whenever I saw Clyde on a movie back in the 80s, I'd be like, oh, there's that guy again. Because I guess being a minority, you just kind of cling on to Mm -hmm. people that look like you. So there was a host of five dudes that were working. You know what I mean? So um, I became friends with Clyde. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. But it was so maybe that would have been an angle that he could have used. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right. Because that 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 sits deeply with you. Yeah. In fact, that was one of the first stories you told me about the character that you were playing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You're probably right. I would have done that. I have no shame. That's what it kind of comes down to. I'll just be like, Aunt. I was scared, but I was like, Andrew, I, I hate asking favors, but like, I really want Bobby. We all really want Bobby. He was the top on the casting director's list. Ooh. We just got the call. He's but out. There's, there's <laughs> we oh, were, that feels so good. We were all so bummed. I, I, I'm sorry. And then the next day, you were on Doughboys, another one of my favorite podcasts. I'm like, fuck, this is rubbing in my face. Uh, we got to somehow get to Bob. But it's <laughs> but it's not only that, but it's like, I've noticed you recently too, because last week you called me, mm-hmm. right? And I didn't respond to you. I know. You know, how does that feel? It felt fine. Okay, thank you. I knew you saw it. I, I figured you <laughs> yeah, were Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see it. Right. I have a reminder when you're recording this podcast to attempt to remind you about the uh, <laughs> special. So you talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I literally oh, have a weekly special. reminder. Yeah. So, you know, I want Brandon to direct my comedy special, my yes. stand up special. Mm-hmm. And if when I when I get when I get it done, when I have it done, right, you're gonna direct it. But you've been very proactive about reminding me. But may I remind you, though, that we're in a fucking pandemic Mm -hmm. and I haven't done stand up in fucking five months. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just waiting for this to subside Mm -hmm. until we get a vaccine or whatever the fucking country does. Mm -hmm. And then we will get back into business of doing it. Mm -hmm. But that's why I didn't respond to you last week, because I'm like, I know that that's in your nature to be proactive. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, that being said, fuck you. Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> no, you're going to be my guy. I love Oh, you. I know. I, no, it's not that I'm I'm not worried about losing the position. Yeah, I'm just yeah, excited yeah. about it and want to keep stoking your excitement so we get it done. But this is what I love about you, man. That's why, um, you know, I've, I, I always want you in my life mm-hmm. um, for the rest of my life. I think you're super talented, too. Like, um, Thank you. The talk about this talk show I did with the, the Green Goblin. Oh, the Goblin. So yeah, I didn't even answer your question of Diplo, but that goes, yeah, let's go. No, let's go back to Dip Dip. But that but that also goes to the Green Goblin. So Necro Goblin comes out. Diplo tweets the word Necro Goblin. I get on the phone with Kevin, and he's like, "Let's do a major laser video," which is one of Diplo's bands, and we made this music video, and it went well, and it just kind of s- snowballed from there, where you know, Kevin or, or Wes or someone else from that team would come and be like, Hey, Diplo's got a music video or we got, I wrote this video that Warner brothers passed on for a different artist. And I sent it to them and I'm like, I want to make this. And they're like, Oh, we got this guy, Dylan Francis. He would love this. And then I started working with him through that. And then, yeah. And then what would Diplo do came about because 
Diplo was like, I need a trailer for my upcoming tour, my Mad Decent block party. His record label is called Mad Decent. And at the time, I took a few meetings where executives were like, we want to do a show about DJs, whether it's like Entourage or Ballers. And I'm like, man, these guys are so not that. But also some friends back home were like, man, he must be so lit and crazy. And ah. So I wrote what I thought people wanted me to tell them Diplo was like this super handsome white guy who's like, yo, it's lit and like always surrounded by women and money. And I was like, maybe James Vanderbeek could play him. He kind of. No, honestly, that's how it came about. Yeah. So, that's, oh, wow. So then I, I, I had my manager send James the script and my reel. And he's like, yeah, I, I'm down if, if I can meet with the director. And James's only caveat was like, can there be a fight scene in this thing? And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we made the, the trailer and then we put it out to promote the tour. I never thought, you know, anything else would come from it. And then uh, Nick Weidenfeld, who was at Viceland at the time, was like, I think this is a show. And he showed it internally to like Eddie Moretti and Spike Jones. And they were like, yeah, maybe this is a show. Wow. Wild. Jeez. Wild. So now I'm on the show. Here's what's sad about what would Diplo do. Mm, it's bittersweet. It's not even sweet, really. Yeah. <laughs> bitter. It's way more bitter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get that. Number one. I want to get emotional, but it could be one of the f my most favorite things I've ever done. Thank you. No, it's not you. Oh, Fuck okay. you. Fuck me. I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's because I love James a lot. He's done Tiger Belly. Mm-hmm. And we've we've also had Dylan Francis on twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So James, I met James and Dylan on What Would Diplo Do? Obviously, I knew, I met you through that. But um, it literally was kind of like so weird and quirky. And um, I just thought like this is this could go. And so when we shot the fucking show, we did a season. How many episodes? Five. Five episodes. I thought, OK, this is my new thing. It just never happened again. I know. And it was a bummer because we got critical acclaim. Like we got a good mm -hmm. Rotten Tomatoes. We have really good reviews out there. But the powers that be. Well, you, it, you can watch it on a Hulu, right? It's no longer on Hulu. It lapsed. It's on Amazon Prime and iTunes. Mm. It's on iTunes and Amazon Prime. If yep. you want to check it out. Bobby's great in it. OK. You, you crush it. You're funny. You improv. You gave us all the gold. And then also this, this scene at the baseball stadium. Yeah. Uh -huh. I did, you know, what I, it's so grounded. That's what was great grounded. about it. So talk about the necro, 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 necro ground, necro goblicon. So yeah, after that video blew up, I've been like the silent band member of that band ever since. Like I work with the band in the creative direction of John goblicon. I run his socials and such. And, um, since then he's now got a talk show. We, I, I, we were approached by a publishing company. I wrote his book that you can now go purchase. Oh we have God. his book. John goblicon yeah, got to life. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And and I'm hoping there's more in the works. But this talk show, and you're so sweet to drive all the way downtown and do this. Um, yeah, he's got a talk show where he interviews guests and they talk for. <laughs> that was actually a very funny, funny. weird um, interview. It was amazing. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Who has done it? Who has been the guest on that shit? Um, I had Joe Troman from Fall Out Boy. Wow. Wes Borland from Limp Biscuit was there, who was wow. freaking out that you were showing up after. He stuck around for you to watch. Oh, did I, I did I introduce you? I don't even remember. I, but, I remember him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've had on uh, Keith Buckley from Every Time I Die, who was in What Would Diplo Do? Yeah, yeah, I love Keith. Um, who else have we had? <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. Keith, Keith, Buck Buck. Keith Buckley's the best. Buckley. Of every time I die. Yeah. Um Whitney Moore, super funny. Um lots of lots of folks. Well, listen, buddy. Number one. And you came down. That was so sweet. Of course I was gonna come down for you, Frocker. I love you so fucking much, dude. I, I really do. I know. I love you I too. I really do love you so fucking much, dude. I love you too. That's why you're here. You think that you're here because you're some famous guy? No, no. How many times <laughs> have we asked you to do this show? Multiple times. Right. Yeah, I, exactly. But who, who canceled? Be, be real. David Spade. <laughs> he canceled? That's kind of cool. No, but he had to move things around. Okay, fair. He uh, never... No, that's not true. Also, We wait, couldn't get a hold of him. So on George's <laughs> episode... On George's episode, you talk about... How um, you never want the producer to reach out to you to be on podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then George reached out to me. <laughs> <laughs> Does it hurt? 
<laughs> doesn't hurt, but because <laughs> I because well, I, mean, I, I called you, I Facetimed you last week for the uh, week, the weekly like, hey, I'm still excited yeah. about this. I screenshotted my face smiling, so okay. you knew. All right, well, um, I'll, I'll be honest. The way it happened last night, mm -hmm. I go, who's the guest? And, and you said, I said Dermer. Dermer, and I go, oh, cool. Fair. You, you think you think that? <laughs> let me ask you something. You think that I know what the fuck is going on around? This True. Time? Fair. Fair. You think that I have a calendar? And he doesn't know all the other times I've asked you to do that. Okay. Podcast. Fair. Yeah, I, oh, I've been asked a lot. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. 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 All right. But you're on top of it. Like on what would Diplo do? You were like there every day I on time. I show up had on your, time. But you had your know, lines. I don't know what's going on ever. You okay. do. You do. Thank you. Remember the T at says like you knew your schedule so well of like I'm traveling. I'm I'm doing stand up. I can't be here for this. Like you were on top. Yeah, of Yeah. Yeah. God. Oh God. This fucking <laughs> pandemic. Remember the days. Oh yeah. Remember the days. We had fucking li a life. Yeah. Yeah. So you want anything to promote? Myself. I just have music videos and commercials coming out all the time. I have shows in development that hopefully one day will see the light of day. Bob will well, be Well, Brendan Dermer is um, on Twitter and also Instagram. Instagram is verified. Oh, wow. Ooh. Are you verified? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What would Diplo do to that? I don't know what happened. You know, because you're special. Mm. And directors rarely, you know, at your level get verified. That's because you're on your way up. Thank you. I really believe you're on your way up. I think, and also, you know, me and Andrew, you know, I don't know if you know this, but um, him and I are going to pitch a bad friend show. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you can direct. I would love to. You know, you are you guys are some of my two favorite people. We love you so much. You know, um, but you know, at the, you know, how our show goes. At the end, we do a thing called unhelpful advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe your little you can get a little quirky Midwest. Oh sure, you know what I mean. Answer, <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, I just want to say one more thing. It's Dermer who always sends me um, links every time Junko Jeans mm -hmm. has. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, do you, what do they call it? Their closing sale because yeah. they're going under. They're always going under. They're, they're like a rug shop on Ventura that's always closing. Right, and they haven't gone under since it's their inception. So, oh, wow. um, but every time now they have overalls that you just sent me. Mm -hmm. Very happy about that. You guys should get sponsored by Jinko. I feel like you guys should be sponsored by Lou Malnati's and Jinko. Is that how you pronounce it, Jinko? Jinko, Jinko jeans. Jinko. I want to say Janko. I want oh, to be really? sponsored I always said by a Janko. lot of people. I said Janko. Is that a Filipino thing? I, it's a Filipino thing. I just, Janko? I like. It's just like when you say, wait, hold on, like Janko. Pubu. I always say Pubu. Like, remember how people used to say Ruka? I mean, ra that is it. Is it? I don't know. Is it Ruka? <laughs> it's Ruka. Oh. What are we talking about? <laughs> I always just thought it was Ruka because, and I thought it was like ran by a Latino person, and it's not. It's a Hawaiian brand. Okay. Baruka means like chip. This is just the thought processes of a Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say that, Bob. <laughs> That's like the N word, man. <laughs> Aw. He's projecting. I'm projecting my own shit. <laughs> Wait, but Bob, whenever the world is ready, or even before that, I'm re I'm ready for you. I know already, dude. I fucking already know. I'm ready. I'm ready to start I'm filming. Ready to go. I'm ready to do so it. Where are some of these ideas for the special? No, no, let's go. One unhelpful <laughs> advice. Unhelpful advice with Bobby, Kalila, and Brandon Derber. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> My father used to drive me to school when I was in seventh grade. One day he left our house at a normal time around 7 a.m. and everything seemed normal. We saw kids walking to the nearby elementary school and the normal radio programming was on. However, when I arrived to school, there were no kids or cars. I walked into my classroom and everyone was already watching a movie. I was two hours late. My father was also two hours late for work. We lost two hours of time with no blackout or a recollection of what may have happened. Everything was completely fluid. My theory is that maybe we passed through a spontaneous wormhole that shifted us in either in time or dimension. This would potentially mean through uh, in our old dimension we are missing persons, and I can't help but be sad for how our family in that world has felt all these years. Thoughts? How do I figure out what really happened to us? We have pen and paper if you guys need any help. This made me think of like a Twilight Zone episode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Has that ever happened in your life where you kind of blacked out for that amount of time? No. Mm. Mm -hmm. Maybe in college, but. <laughs> yeah, I've never fully, fully blacked out, but there were times in like my peak anxiety and I blamed my anxiety where I felt like I would wake up from a nap at like my sister's house and I could not for the life of me snap back into reality. Like I was caught in some caught in some like psychological limbo of feeling like I was not really living on this earth and it happened for a few hours and I would sit there and cry I would tell my sister like wake me up can you wake me up she's like you're awake I'm like wake me up like I was trapped 
So I don't know if I was um, a part of me was in a different dimension yeah. and just kind of in a, in a limbo between two different dimensions. But um, I don't know that 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 seems like um, that does seem like a twilight. I get that with the anxiety, though. I call it like time consumption when I'm having a panic attack. Yeah. Or my anxiety is at peak level. Time is irrelevant and I just waste time panicking. Guys, I don't think I've ever blacked out like that. It happened to the father and son. Okay. And the odds of both of them having an anxiety attack and having two hours go by that quickly is. Um, so th I'm going to say something. Number one, um, the X-Files pilot had that. So it could be in the work of some alien. I, I, my, my point is, it looks like the work of the little greys. So you think they were taken and then put back? You know back. what the little greys are? Mm -hmm. What are the little greys? Little spacemen. <laughs> That's right. But it's not, they're just not little spacemen. They're um, actually the first um, alien species that had contact with um, the, our planet, and they live amongst us in these underground bunkers, mm -hmm. in military bases. Mm -hmm. they're here. They have tele what? <laughs> They have telepath. Yes, they're here. Okay. I don't like your tone. Mm. I'm looking up X Files, the pilots. So oh yeah, yeah. Understand. They have Great telepathic pilot. abilities. Mm -hmm. They don't have vocal cords. They and communicate. And I do have a little gray story that I'll tell on another podcast. Mm -hmm. But it's true. Do you feel like Wait, you've I ever been contacted? <laughs> you feel like they've gotten a, a hold of you? <sighs> Not me personally. But when I was 18 years old, I was in Lemon Grove, and I was at an AA meeting, and there was a man in a suit there. He looked like he was in the FBI, mm -hmm. and he goes, hey, kid, my name is Max. And I go, are you going to molest me? That's whenever, whenever a man in a suit comes up like to me. They look like Tommy Lee Jones? Yeah. <laughs> when they are, they ask me, you know what I mean? Hey, kid, I always ask, are they going to molest me? So I go, and then I became friends with this guy. And then one day he looked like he had been through uh, like an alcohol oh, drug binge. He didn't have a suit on anymore. He kind of had like a Hawaiian shirt like I have on now. Looked scraggly. And he goes, you may never see me again, kid. I mean, this is not a lie. I'm not making mm -hmm. this up. And I go, and this could be just a crazy white man who I just happened to run into. I go, what's going on? And he goes, well, you know, I, I, I work for the local FBI, San Diego FBI, or something. There's no, there's a local FBI. Every I city has their own FBI, right? Oh, I thought it was a federal thing. Yeah, but they have their own like agents that, and offices, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And I go, he goes, yeah, and I go, and he goes, um, well, I'm not, no, no, no longer living there, living out of my, uh, working there, I living out of my van. Mm. So he had this van parked in back of this AA meeting. It was like a church. In the in his, I'm not kidding you. I saw his van. In the van, there were like shotguns, like on these racks, mm. right? Like stuff like computer wires and all that kind of stuff. But then he had files, files upon files of like documents. You know what I mean? And he would open them up and he go and he was telling me about these little grays. I'm not kidding you, mm -hmm. right? And then I never saw him again. You got to find this guy. He's probably dead. Why did he say you would never see him again? What was his reason? I don't know what the reason was, but I never did see him again. Hmm. What were in those files? Alien shit, man. I just told you that, man. And you <laughs> saw it with your own eyes? Yeah, man. Real fucking military files on the fucking little grays, man. You know the lead, the former lead singer of Blink-182, Tom DeLonge, has a show mm -hmm. on the History Channel right now all about UFOs? Well, didn't he start that yeah, whole Yeah, and he's the producer on it. Yeah. yeah. Also, I went to high school with him. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Did you really? Yeah, he was two years before me. When I first came to California while I was still in film school to look for a place to live, I saw him on the street. I said, Tom, what are you doing here? And he said, what are you doing here? <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a good story. <laughs> the second thing I wrote down, X-Files... <laughs> But the second thing I wrote down about this guy's story, and this, I'm not uh, I'm assuming anything. Before we continue, someone on the internet called me Blink-182 times. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty really good. Funny. That's really good. That's her new because name. Because so I have yeah, excessive blinking from anxiety. <laughs> Bob, oh. did you see Blink-182 in high school? Like when you were growing up? Like they, weren't, they didn't start the band then. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, it was only when I graduated that that's when they started the band. There was another band locally called Unwritten Law. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was started in my town, too. That's awesome. I had a weird high school. You know, I came from there, and also a couple years after before me was Stephanie Seymour. She was a supermodel. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, <gasps> yeah. Yes, yeah, so she dated uh, Axel Rose. She had a baby mm-hmm. with Axel Rose. Yeah. So, yeah, we have a really weird a la you know well, you know And I don't want to talk about Howie High because they still haven't put me in. I've heard about you that. You know that, that's bullshit, um, yeah. uh, that video, that music video for November Rain? Yes. Wasn't it Stephanie? Stephanie Seymour in yeah, that, yeah, and yeah, she yeah. had that um, short bushy, on the bushy. front. No wedding bushy, dress. Bushy. And I never ever imagined myself ever getting married when I was younger, but I remember in my head I was like, "Oh, that's the dress I'm gonna wear." The other unhelpful advice I want to say about the thing is, is that mm. two hours, and I'm not saying this has happened, but it could, something traumatic could have happened mm-hmm. in that two hour that you blocked. Mm. So maybe his Either dad some, was late for work for the, some other, he was wasted. Maybe maybe the dad and the son experienced something, right, that was so traumatic that they blocked it in their head and they showed up, he just showed up at school. Or your dad just woke you up late, tried to pass it off like he wasn't a bad parent and got you to school two hours late. That, so that's the third that's thing. And then tried to make it seem like... That's the obvious know. thing. Yeah. And yeah. now you've grown up thinking of this your whole life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you guys see that documentary... Um, uh, hidden in plain sight. Um, um, abducted. Yes, in abducted plain in plain sight. sight. Yeah. And that that poor girl grew up for how many years thinking uh-huh. she met aliens? And yep, you know what I mean. Mm. All from a lie. That was the most enraging documentary. I yeah, I felt seen. really sad. Oh, oh, is that the guy that, that oh, the perverted man? That yeah. yeah. And then the family just kept letting her go back to this yes. person over and over again. They kept forgiving him because you know they're Mormon and they're forgiving. Remember that. I hate that. I, I mean, I'm just just by him bringing that up. Yeah, it just brings me back. I blocked that documentary. It, it's mind. very mm-hmm. gruesome. Yeah. It's and I effective. I remember the the lengths this man would go through to to make it seem as though that there was some type of alien connection when they were living in that trailer in yes. the Mexico somewhere. Yeah, and with the tapes and the messing with the oh. audio, that poor girl and the woman that she grew up to be. It she's so. Uh, she's so uh, self-aware of what happened and and has mm-hmm. like processed it. It's and their family is intact. Yeah, like they are all talking about it. Like, yeah, this happened, but we're really close. And mm-hmm. I'm like, how do you even forgive your parents after that? Yeah. Oh, I want to throw out another documentary that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah, but it's called Jasper Mall. I don't know it. It's an, a little quirky little uh, documentary, and it's about a mall in in the South that's closing down. It's like. You know, in a small town called Jasper, I don't know, Arkansas or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it just shows, you know, the stores and, you know, the old men playing, you know, dominoes at the court. And it's really depressing, but it's really cute. And I really highly recommend it. I also want to recommend to the people listening to really get involved with Brandon Dermer and, Dermer and what he's doing in his life. Thanks. Because he's our family and... Mm-hmm. Um, he, we are going to be doing a many, many, many projects together. And I also um, want to say God bless America. <laughs> and God bless the U.S. of A. Mm. And we're going to make through this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, we will. Let me ask you something, George. Did your episode do remotely better than any of the other episodes? Um, it's, uh, it's number seven on the last ten on YouTube right now. That's yeah, that's not, not good. Bad. That's not good. That's not bad. That's not bad. Though. That's not good either. As a longtime fan of the show, I was excited to hear the George episode. And then, did you feel as though we did? <laughs> God, we, you didn't. Uh, why did you we say didn't that? Give him his. <laughs> we didn't give him the limelight. Bobby refused to. I said, "Okay, we're going to ask George from beginning to I end about you. his life." And Are you Bobby mad? was like, "Nope, that's uh, not what we're going to do." I, I could have taken it, you know. If I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd All right, guys, I'd, guys, uh, give <laughs> this. I really. Okay, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut shut okay. the fuck up, man. Still going. Uh, oh, we're done. We're done. We're done. All right. We're done with you. Okay. I want to give um, Brandon a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. He was a great guest. I yeah. really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you for having me, Bob. Kalila. Clap everyone. for yourself, too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, guys. Thanks again to everyone over at Tiger Belly Patreon. If you're a member, you already know what a great community we have over there of people just like you. If you want to join and get access to all exclusive content, plus our Discord, you can find out more at patreon.com slash tigerbelly. Let's also thank our sponsors, Hims and BetterHelp. Today, Hims is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. And right now, our listeners can get their very first 
uh, visit absolutely free. Go to forhims.com slash belly. That's forhims.com slash belly. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Bobby and Kalila use this and Jules, a.k.a. Rudy. A uh, special offer for Tiger Belly listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash belly. And to get your question on Tiger Belly by billing up by oh guys get your question on tiger belly by emailing us at advice unhelpful at gmail.com we're looking for interesting unusual non-typical problems you know like uh time rifts in our dimensions and we need your help as much as you want ours that's advice unhelpful at gmail.com we love you guys you can follow us on tiger belly on instagram at tiger belly on twitter at the tiger belly you can follow kalila on all her social media and all her thirst traps at calamity k and you can follow Bobby at Bobby Lee Live. You can follow George, Mr. Married Man, at George underscore Kimmel. And guys, keep up with your CDC updates at Gilbert's. We love you. Have a good night.